How's it going, guys? Welcome back to a bit more Heart Gold. And me closing a couple windows here. It is, it's been a little bit. As you can see by the uh, both the playtime and the Pokedex, things have changed on this file a little bit. But don't worry, I have not skipped over too much. I think I might have had to fight a trainer or two. But most of what I did for fights was either fights here in the uh, end of the Victory Road in Johto or uh, refighting trainers that called me on the Poke Gear. So as you can see, our, our team's been changed up a little bit here, but I'm going to go over that once I get out of the cave and I won't get interrupted by any battles. Like with all the streams, I'm going to try to just get through two gems today and we will mostly call it there. It's going to largely depend on which two gems that I need to do, because some of them uh, are pretty close by each other, and then others are not at all. In fact, they're they're quite a hassle to get to if you've been watching the verses, because I'm a little bit farther ahead in the verses than I am here. But let's get out of that drafty doorway. And move up to here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take the seal off my team because I just picked it up and this is just part of the Pokedex. I don't have it for any other particular reason. So I would like to swap that out for my Golduck that's actually got the HMs that I want. Oh, and Lickitung is the same as well. I I was going to say I don't remember why that one's in there at the same time, but I think it's for the exact same reason as just leveling it up to get it to be its evolved state. This is mostly what I did last night, was namely getting all of these right here. These are all, like, fishing ones you have to do that uh, are doable with the good rod, but it would have been nice to have the super rod, and that, that was the point where it's like, yeah, if I get up early, I definitely need to stream more of this so that if I need to catch any more of the super rod ones in particular that won't be quite as won't be quite quite as strenuous strenuous the uh let's see what was the other Pokemon that I had was it Nido King I assume cut strength rocks yeah that looks like that would be correct okay Cool, we're caught up on that. Okay. Now that we're caught up, give me just a moment, because somebody is poking me. So I need to make sure I answer that real quick, and I will be right back. making sure some stuff for work is set in place for getting for a meeting that will be coming up pretty soon here. Anyway, distractions aside, and hopefully there won't be two more of those, but uh, as our scheduler does not want to schedule, that means that it is left up to me as the only responsible adult, despite being one of the youngest on the team, but you know how it is. So, this is what our team is currently looking like. I have gained a few levels even on my main team. The biggest thing to make note of is that I got rid of whatever was here prior, Lava Plume, I believe, and swapped that out for Eruption. This was through leveling up, so this is user attacks and explosive fury. The lower the user's HP, the less powerful this attack becomes. This is a particularly good one, if I remember correctly, because this is a, if you're playing in a double battle, it hits both of your enemies and does not hit your ally, much like how Surf used to do. So very good for that, provided that your HP is at full. Other than that, the moveset here is the same for Typhlosion. For Crobat, this is basically the same. Nothing has really changed. Uh, 
couple more levels, but again, other than that, not really anything. With Umbreon, what has changed here is because I was doing breeding stuff and using Umbreon, I got a couple of eggs in the daycare, so I ended up actually losing Bite completely by accident. It only gained one level, but apparently that was the one level it needed to get in order to learn, I think, Mean Look, but I didn't want Mean Look on Umbreon, so I got rid of it and swapped that out for Assurance, so that is why Assurance is here instead of Bite. These last two, of course, Surf will pour Waterfall, Water Pulse, Cut Poison Sting, or Cut Strength and Rock Smash are seven of the, uh, oh wait, one of these isn't Water Pulse, is it? So yeah, those are six of the eight uh, HMs, so that's what both of them are doing here. Of course, the seventh one is Fly on Crobat. And then lastly, we have a technically permanent for the playthrough, but not going to be used on my final team in Versus, which is Zangus. I did pick one up. This is one that I've been training since the uh, since level one, so I picked one up. I did the breeding for it, so that's why it's got the uh, one of the more optimal natures for it, which is a jolly nature. So that's why its speed is high, and its special attack is particularly low. But since it is a Zangoose, it is using physical moves, so having a low special attack, of course, does not matter. And the fact that its attack stat is literally higher than its health means that it's going to be hitting pretty hard. It's still got to play a little bit of catch-up, but you can even see in terms of the at least the attack stat, it's on par almost with stuff that is 10 levels, 11 levels higher than it. So it'll, it'll need to catch up some, but I don't think it's going to be like debilitating like if I could use this in a fight right now and be totally fine it was taking out stuff in uh, victory road with no real difficulty it had the type disadvantage sure so it would often take two hits but it wasn't like completely and totally getting flattened or anything like that that said I am st still going to give it the experience share in order to help it catch up so that's that looking at our pokedex the Jono Pokedex, as you can see, I have obtained quite a bit more. We're going to start from the top here, just so you can see exactly how much I've been working on. Most of the stuff that I'm missing here was either just not obtainable yet, based on where we are in the story, like with Pikachu. I don't have the proper evolution stones, like with Clefairy right there, or with Victory Bell. I need to trade with certain items, as you can see with Slowbro, and then I think Poliwrath was up there, Poliwhirl, rather. More evolution stones needed... Uh, I do need to get those. I believe I can do both of those. Need an evolution stone here. Or lastly, there's something I need to trade from Soul Silver, like the Vulpix line. So I am up to on doing uh, going through here. I'm up to here 178 with Seal. So I need to get Dugong. As you can see, the list is a lot thinner on these uh, lower parts. But that's because I haven't started working at that point yet. So that's why. So that's where we are on the Pokedex. Uh, what else do I need to show off? Probably how to get Zangoose, which we're going to do pretty quickly here. So I'm going to fly over to the Safari Zone, and I'm getting messaged again, so again, I will be right back in about a, hopefully not a minute, but pretty close. They seem to be getting decently close to at least figuring out a date for when specifically when they want to do it. Sometime this week, but who can say for sure. So, for getting Zangoose, if you do want a Zangoose on your team, uh, going to the Safari Zone, I think I've shown off some of this, but just to go over it as a whole, when you first get to the Safari Zone, this guy will give you a challenge of catching a Geodude, and it will be in the starting area of the Safari Zone. After that, you need to wait uh, three not in-game, but uh, real clock hours. I just left the game running, I think. And then uh, he'll call you on the Poke Gear. It's not one you can miss, because he'll automatically call you. And he'll ask you to catch a Sand True. You'll do that by going to this little computer over here, uh, which is the Area Customizer. 
you can swap out different land types. You, if you've got the forest right here, you can swap this out for plains, meadow, savanna, wetland, rocky beach, all the stuff that you see here. I'm not actually going to do that, but you can do it there. Swap it out to the one that he tells you to, and then go pick up your sand shrew. After you've done that, you need to wait, I think, another three more in-game hours, and he'll call you again, giving you objects that you can place inside of each area. If I go to the plains here, you can see number of objects that seem to be liked by Pokemon on rocks is at 15, rather than everything else that's at zero. That's because I placed things there. So in order to get a Zangoose, uh, very quick, I'm going to go back to that to make sure I'm showing the right one. In order to do that, you need to have 15 uh, uh, peak objects, which I'll explain what those are, in the plains. I'm going to quickly go in here just so you can see it. And I might show off that a Zangoose is in the area if I can find one real quick. But I won't catch one, because I've already got plenty. But just to show how it works. This is something ultimately you're probably just going to want to look up and see if there's any Pokemon in particular that you really want that you have to do things like this. But as you can see, here are all of the objects that I placed. Whenever you have the ability to place objects, just go to an empty spot on the ground, hit A, it'll ask to place an object, and here's your list of objects. The big problem with this is, he will give you objects in sets. He'll give you four, there'll be four sets in total, so he'll give you a set of objects each time he calls you. So you'll get a set, and then you'll have to wait two IRL hours, he'll give you another set, and so on and so forth until you get them all. So you may not necessarily get the types of objects that you need, which in my case, for the peak objects, is a small rock, a big rock, or a mossy rock, and of course, I didn't get any peak objects until the last possible phone call that he gave me. So it took me quite a while to get what I needed. So I have 15 of those objects placed, now the Zangoose is available to be found in the tall grass. The big thing you'll also want to check with this, however, is even if you do fulfill the requirements to get Pokemon, sometimes you do have to wait IRL days. Thankfully, Zangoose is not one that you have to wait any IRL days. The minute that you place the rocks down, you're able to catch it. However, the other one that I could possibly get from the Safari Zone... Oh, there he is, or there she is, rather. I'll attempt to catch it since I'm still talking here. The other one that I wanted to catch via Safari Zone, which thankfully there was another way to do it, after you did it, you had to wait 40 IRL days before you could catch it, before it would even show up. And that's a long, long time. Way too long, if we're being perfectly honest. So, needless to say, I didn't want to do that. I did the other method of collecting it, which, while it has to be done on a specific day, is a lot more reasonable to do that than it is to uh, attempt to wait 40 days, because that's a month and a half, basically. Didn't want to wait that long. I did catch him, by accident. Did catch her. Sorry. Did catch Zangoose, so that's nice. But yeah, that's essentially how it all works for doing that. Serebi.net is your friend here, just to figure out exactly what you can find in each area. Uh, it is pretty good for getting your Pokedex. There was a few Pokemon that I caught in here. I had to wait for day hours because I'm usually playing at night hours. But there are ones you can catch during the day that are a little bit easier to find here, and ones you can catch at night that are a little bit easier to find here, at least for the Jonto Pokedex. I'm not going for National by any stretch of the imagination, but I am going to try to at least do Jonto. So that is essentially how that works. So I'll be keeping Zangus on my team, leveling it up. Again, for Versus, it's not going to be my on my final team, uh, because it is not a Gen 2 Pokemon, it is Gen 3. But I did want to have another team member going forward that was actually leveled up with my team, basically not fighting with just a team of three. And now that I've explained that, uh, very quickly I'm going to hop off and do another message real quick just to make sure we're figuring this out, and then we will actually make a progress forward.
All right. Let's take a look here and see where we need to go. It is worth noting I was playing this earlier this morning, so the Apricorn thing is not available right now. I did do some of that. And while I do have Pokeballs and whatnot to catch things, I don't have a ton, but again, I don't really need to catch anything right now. I'm more focused on making the progress. And I wouldn't really say unlocking more routes for me to get stuff, but it essentially is just so I don't run into trainers, that kind of thing that I've already fought. I do want to show as much of that on screen as I can. All right, so we've done Saffron, we've done Vermilion City, so it looks like Celadon is probably our next best bet. What is this one here? This is Fuchsia. I do have a bit of a time limit I'm working with here, not an extreme one or anything, but I do want to try to get this done decently quick, but I am going to fight every trainer that I see along the way. I do think for the time being, though, I'm going to keep Zangus out of the front of the party, just so I'm not, like, constantly switching out if I run into stuff that I'm clearly out-leveled for. Because since it is a new route and whatnot, I'm not entirely sure what to expect to see level-wise for the trainers. The wild Pokemon not really worried about their level. Yeah, definitely not worried about their level. But for the trainers, obviously, they're going to be a little bit more difficult. So, we'll see. See how it goes. A mental herb. I'll put the emphasis on the H because I know... It in one person in particular, if they watch it, they will not like me doing that. Because it's herb and not herb. I would actually bother to get the experience from those wild encounters if they weren't super low level, but since they are, I'll probably just run from them if we're being honest. Alright, Celadon. I don't even remember if Celadon has a gym. I don't think it does, actually. This is the game corner. That's just a trainer tips thing. That's the prize pool area where you go and get your prizes from the game corner. Uh, you, yeah, I was about to say, you have the fighting gym in Gen 4, if I remember correctly. But we're not playing Gen 4, so we can just leave her be. Oh no, this does. Yeah, that's right, because the grass gym is here. You have to kind of go around this. We'll go to the gym last, I guess, just because I want to show everything here. That guy doesn't give you anything, I don't think. We'll check real quick. But I think he does mention that there are both Grimer and Muck in this particular pond right here. Yeah. He says it only has Grimer, but it does have Muck as well, because I believe in the verses. Whenever I went across to talk to him and then went back, I got attacked by a Muck on the one of the few tiles, so knew it would be both. Yeah, so here's the department store. Yeah, yeah. Here's the department store, but I don't think there's anything really different from that one that there is in the Jonta one that's in Goldenrod, so I'm not going to go in there just on the grounds. I don't really think there's anything that I need to grab there. I don't think there is in the condominiums for the time being. I'm going to check but I don't think there's anything in here in particular. I believe this is just the area that all games have that are like, hi, I'm the character version in-game of the the music, the sound director, the, the normal director, of, you know, all the different parts that go into making the game, which are appreciated. There's just no reason for me to do anything with them right now because usually this is where you would go should you have your... should you have your uh, Pokedex completed. It could be Oak, though. I honestly don't remember. I don't think I ever bothered to finish the the Pokedex when I first played Heart Gold Soul Silver. I don't think it ever happened. Yeah, I don't know what that guy gives you offhand, because I think it was the same issue as last time of him saying, come back at sunset in the verses, and I did not do that, so. That is something I will check at a later date. Oh, 
we will go. We're on one floor, so we'll go to floor three. It's reserved for Game Freak only, yet apparently I'm allowed to use it. Even though, uh, this might come as a surprise to you, I don't work at Game Freak. Yeah, I think she's just gonna be like... Oh, okay. If it's all the cancer. I mean, it would be impossible unless you straight up cheated to not have them all at this point. Yeah, so you got like your programmer here, the planner... president yeah that's always like the uh, the rough part of doing remakes of like you don't want it to just be exactly the same close sure but not exactly the same you don't want to just throw a new coat of paint on it and call it a day oh all eight Kanto badges I was thinking Jonto badges for some reason You don't want to just, like, slap a new coat of paint on it and call it a day. But at the same time, you don't want to mess with it so much of people being like, Oh, they, they got rid of this. Why did they do that? I liked it the way it was. So it's, like, kind of hunting for areas that they might find annoying and tweaking those slightly. But then not changing too much. I don't know. It's a, it's a tough line to balance, and, of course, pleasing everybody is impossible. But I think most people consider... Heart Gold Soul Silver to be a very faithful remake compared to the original game of Gold Silver Crystal. Definitely more than a Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl, that's for sure. And despite the uh, town's relatively large size, I think that's really it aside from the gym. And of course, with having a Typhlosion, I don't think this is going to be too terribly hard. Because on top of having the Typhlosion, we also have a, uh, a Poison Flying type as well. So I don't think this is going to be too terribly hard. Remember, the May is kind of giving me a tiny bit of trouble in the Versus file, but not too much. I'm getting poked again, so give me a moment here. see here a lot of this admittedly is just kind of fumbling around as you look for the right way to go specifically it's one of those puzzles of like it's a cool 3d puzzle don't get me wrong but unfortunately in terms of explaining where to go if you're not just kind of feeling through it yourself explaining it just does not cross over very well unfortunately Oh, these are not as... I mean, granted, these are the gym trainers, not the gym leader, but I was expecting them to be a little bit higher level than this. Because while I did game some levels, like I said on my main team, it wasn't a lot. It was probably only, like, maybe two or three at absolute most, I think. These are ones I could probably send my Zangus out against and be fine. But grass types typically, traditionally, will like to throw a lot of status effects at you, like poison and sleep. 
So I figure for now it's probably best to just not let them get that opportunity. Not like Jump Luff's ever been considered a powerhouse or anything, but... You know, might as well be a little bit more careful. This is a dual battle anyway, so we'll see how Zangu's fares here. I feel like for the time being it would probably do better in single battles, just because I do have Swords Dance on it. I didn't show what his moveset was, but it's Slash, Swords Dance, X, Scissor, and False Swipe. And False Swipe was just there to help me catch Pokemon for the decks that I didn't have. He started with it at level 1, so I just kept it on him. There's no reason to change it. All the HP in the world is going to save that Vile Plume. Nice try, though. I was going to say, I'd like to see how much damage it could do, but unfortunately that one was uh, something Zangus could not have got past. You know what? Maybe I will. I'm going to go ahead and switch him to the front. We'll, we'll see how he does here. Like I said, I think he'd do better in single battles right now. Getting that Swords Dance, provided he doesn't get hit with sleep immediately, having that Swords Dance boost would probably be enough to make him uh, effective in one-shotting just about everything. Even for people that don't like using the uh, buffs or debuffs and prefer to just have the attacks, I would still recommend Swords Dance, honestly. Upping your attack by two stages does make one heck of a big deal. And you can raise your special defense, that's fine. I wasn't planning on attacking you with a special move here. Also helps that I'm using Slash, too, which has that chance for a critical hit, of course. Very nice. If you can hear, like, some crashing and noises going on in the background, it's my neighbors. I've been waiting for them to, like, be quiet for the past... Let's see, we've been streaming for about half an hour, somehow. Uh, I wanted to start a little bit... Probably about half an hour ago, maybe a little bit more... But I, I kept waiting, kept waiting, kept waiting, knew, knowing that I was on a time limit, and they just would not stop making noise. They're still doing it now, so if you hear that, I do apologize. Alright, so all we gotta do is just break through this once, and we should be good to go. I don't think a Paris is gonna do... yeah. <laughs> Even without the, the Swords Dance boost, I don't think there's much it could have done there, but I figured I'd get that going before. I was going to say the real threats appeared, and then we just got an evolved version of Paris, so maybe there won't be any threats on this team. Maybe this is all we're going to be seeing. Carnivine, eh, I mean, that's a little better. Considering the abundance of grass types, both from Gens 1 and 2, you think they would have a little bit more variety. Like, you don't have to have a grass Pokemon and then also its evolution on the same team. you got plenty of options to work with here. Also, no, I don't know why they put the, the cut trees in the way. Like, if you really want us to prove we have cut, uh, one, we already technically need it for Lieutenant Surge, unless you're going way out of order for some reason, and two, you just need the one tree at the beginning. You don't really need more than that. But now we can fight... What's her name? Erica. There we go. 
the grass trainer. I'm trying to think off the top of my head what types repeat between all the gyms, because I don't think it's possible to not have at least one. But technically the second gym in Jonta was Bug, not, um, not Grass. Oh, this is higher level. Alright, well, we'll see how we do here. With the jolly nature, I do have a high speed, so I do think I'm going to outspeed most grass types since they're really usually not that fast. Yeah. The, the full restore spam begins. expecting you to send out the one you, that you used U-turn with, but alright, that works too. I do believe this is the more defensive of the two. Oh, of course you got a Citrus Berry. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't think he's going to do quite enough damage to be able to take it out. Oh, never mind, got a critical. Good job, Zangoose. Yeah, I'm pretty sure more defensive than the uh, counterpart of Vile Plume. Which I'm gonna guess is probably her last one. That's just a guess, though, I can't say for sure. That's not gonna be enough for her to not use a full restore. Thankfully, she is out of full restores and can't do that anymore. Nope, it's Tangela. That's her ace in the hole. That's her last hope. Alright. Well, an attempt was made using blue spaghetti. You did it! You took out my first teammate! I'm so proud of you! Now you're about to get burned alive! And there you have it. Like I said, uh, just based on the team that I had, I was not too terribly worried about that. They honestly could have been higher level, and I think we would have been fine. Because truthfully, I actually don't know if, like, what order you're supposed to fight the, the gyms for, for Kanto. For this version, obviously not for red, blue, yellow, or fire red, leaf green. Those are pretty clear in what order they want you to do. But for this, I'm not admittedly so sure. There we go. Always seems easier to leave than it is to, uh get through it. Maybe part of that's getting stopped by the gym trainers, but still. Alright, I'm getting poked again, so give me another minute, and then we'll go figure out what uh, items that my mom just bought for me. I think I've got a second set that she gave me off screen as well.
And I think we might have a date settled for that meeting, question mark? I know it's not really important what we're doing right now, but in case anyone was curious. We're just having one person, like, really fighting against having it on a specific day because they don't want to have to come in for just the meeting. But, like, I'm ha it looks like I'm going to have to come in for just that meeting and then go back. Like, somebody, at least two people are going to have to do that. I think, actually, at least three people are going to have to do that since it's a mandatory meeting. Like, there's no getting around it. Someone will have to do that. And as much as I don't like having to take, like, the hour and a half, however long it is to do it, at least you get paid for doing it, and I always clock in before I leave and then clock out once I get home, because that gives you another 40 minutes. Alright, that's one badge down, and that didn't take too terribly long, but again, we didn't have to go too terribly far, so I'm sure that was part of it. I did say I didn't need anything in here, but I'm pretty sure the guy is in here. Yep, he is. There's more berries. I don't think there's going to be anything worth what He might have a third package, maybe? No, just two. Okay. I'll do a quick run-through since I'm here to see if there's anything new. I don't think so. I'm going to talk to that guy in the back with a mask on, because he's got something for me. I'm going to do it on full heals. i got plenty of those. Should have plenty of revives. Plenty of hyper potions. Yeah, we're, we're stocked up there. Don't need those. How about you? And I could grab some of these for off-screen stuff, I guess. I do have some repels on me in case I need them. The mail is, of course, completely useless. But yeah, if you do talk to this guy. Crash or Wake. Again, gym leader from a different game. No, I can never let it go. That's not it. You want the other mask? Okay. So yeah, you can get the masks for your fashion case. And he'll give you all three of the starters from Gen 4. Chimchar, Turtwig, and Piplup as well. So if you're interested in doing all that stuff, this is one option you can get. I don't really do much of the fashion show stuff, so it doesn't really bother me. Uh, here we got TMs. I'm just going to buy these just for saying that I've got them. Got frustration and return that I just picked up here. Uh, this is swagger, I'm pretty sure. This is charm, I think. I don't need to buy that, but I think that's taunt. This is torment, I'm pretty sure. Oh, go back to the second page. Uh, this looks like Safeguard. I'm not looking at a list, so these it's entirely possible I'm wrong here. Uh, this is Dig that I already have. I don't remember the name of this one, but I do know that this is the uh, rock equivalent of Spikes. I have no clue what this one is. sure what that one is, and that one's like Dark Pulse or something like that. Yeah, I always try to make sure to talk to the kids that are holding the game systems, because sometimes they will offer you trades. I don't know how the in-game trades are... He, uh, how good or bad they are here, but I did make point of them in a, one of the earlier episodes just because that was the gym with the normal type and fighting types were pretty uncommon and you could trade for a Machop, so I do like to at least hopefully show where some of the trades are. 
Uh, so this is going to be the stat boosting item, isn't it? This is going to be like the Carbos, your Zinx, your, you know, oh, and the crappy X items that I never use. So this is going to be the vitamins. Yep, that's the vitamins. We're going to skip over those. Yeah, that's true. If you're going for happiness evolutions, then using the vitamins do help with that. That's a nice little, uh, nice little thing there. And then, of course, the top of the building's got the machines that give you uh, soda pop for 60 health, water for 50 health, and lemonade for 80 health. Which, the lemonade's actually pretty good bang for your buck. It's just likely by this point you're probably not going to need that anymore. It's likely that your health pool on your Pokemon is just too high to really need that. So, eh. Alright, I'm getting poked again, so I'm going to save, and then we will continue on for hunting down badge number 12 here. And save. I have returned. Let's see. Based on the map... Fuchsia does have a gym, so we'll probably go there first. Going through this section here, this is a long, long section, all to get to Lavender Town, which does not have a gym. So there's three here, this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven, and this is eight. Not necessarily in that order, just that's where the gems are. So we'll go ahead and do that gem to the south of where we are now. And depending on how much time I think we have, we might go ahead and, like... Get, like start doing the the trainers on that set of routes because again there are a lot of them there like a ridiculous amount if I'm being perfectly honest would you like to hear a trendy thing sure why not the trendy thing for you to say would be omnibus okay I think that's one of those things of, like, people give you the word and then it's in your little repertoire, and so when you talk to other people, they're like, hey, what do you think of, like, X, Y, or Z, or give me a popular saying, you can do that and they'll give you some sort of gift, which is usually a berry. You have to be on a bicycle. Alright, I'm on a bicycle. Now, get fucked, and I'm gonna continue with what I was doing. 
Uh, yeah, we'll we'll continue to keep Zangus in the front unless I think he's just way too underleveled. Uh, mostly what's here, hilariously enough, is poison types. So Zangus, at the very least, will have the immunity to being poisoned. I think that patch of grass up there is also a spot you can find Grimer. Maybe Muck? Grimer, for pretty sure. So, if you don't have it, you can get it there. That is one I've already picked up. I did that at the Safari Zone. Yeah, based on... Yeah, by all means. Yeah, based on the damage I'm doing here, there's not really any need to use Swords Dance. Because it's either use Slash, and it will either leave them with a tiny bit of health, or defeat them, potentially get a critical, and have to do that for two turns, or use Sword Stance and then attack them, which is also going to take two turns, so I might as well just use Slash over and over. At least for stuff like that. For a Weezing that's got a bit more defense, Sword Stance does make sense. Because should I not need to go back to heal, which is very likely, that I ultimately won't. I mean, I might, but ultimately I won't. Oh, he still survived that even with the sword stance. Jeez. Well, we'll just use X scissor here. I know it's not very effective, but he was at red, so no big deal. Actually, yeah, you know what? I might keep Zangus like, healed pretty frequently. One thing you all have to watch is because of the cycling road making you automatically move down is you can't go into your menu while you're moving. Like, I'll show that off real quick. Let me move forward. You can hear me mashing the button here. Like, here, right. Oh, you actually can. It's just a little picky. So you're probably better off moving to a spot, like, on... Uh, on a player character like this, so you can get to your bag. Same thing for, like, answering phone calls. It might just be easier to do that. Yeah, I've got plenty of hyper potions, and even if I run out, I can always just buy more, so I'll just continue to use him in the main slot here. Who told you you could ride up and down this road? Um, who told me I couldn't? Also be right back because I'm getting poked again. All right, let's see how this bike roll do. Unsurprisingly, you're gonna get a lot of these, so. If uh, you're not prepared for the poison gym or figuring out what combats well against it, this will give you a pretty good idea of what will and won't work as you go through here. Now, 
think you'll be seeing Tentacruel in particular. I was trying to remember, but I, I don't think I can off the top of my head. You probably won't be seeing Tentacruel specifically, but you'll definitely be seeing Poison types once you get to the gym. Which means that in my case, Zengus wouldn't be a horrible choice. There's not really a bad or a good choice on my team for this, per se. It's usually when I think what's good against poison, ground is the first thing that comes to mind, which I don't really have on my team. And when I think of what's bad, I think grass predominantly, and I don't have grass on my team, so... I think overall I'm not looking at anything that's too particularly strong or too particularly weak when it comes to dealing with the, uh, the poison gym. Gulpin is pretty low level, so we'll take that out. I think despite being a frog, Crow Gunk is pure poison. I don't think it has a water subtype. Nope, doesn't look like it. Wow, that was pretty much crap for experience. <laughs> they're low level, but they're not that low level. Like, jeez. Much the Gulpin give. No, no, I gave less. Not a lot less, though. Yeah, this is probably going to... Oh. So one guy had three, and the other one just had the one, huh? That's weird. I was expecting to see another one pop out there, and it didn't happen. Okay. Oh, yep, there's no target. That is the unfortunate thing, is you can't just uh, use two attacks like that, and if one defeats, then you can wait for the other one to get sent out and just immediately get attacked. Which is fair, because, I mean, that would kind of make it really easy for you to just dogpile on one Pokemon, and then whatever gets sent out is going to get nailed immediately before they can even do anything or put in an attack. Anything else? Yeah, here's another one. Not a speed battle? I mean, I was already kind of flying down this road anyway. Yeah, it almost feels like I should have been here before I should have been in Vermilion, and Vermilion is the town that they take you to when you go to Kanto. That's the first place you go, so if you're still going for badges, probably the first person you're going to fight is Lieutenant Surge. Your truckload of health or defense or both or whatever it is is not going to save you here. Too bad. Close cop. Ooh. Ooh, that's tempting. Yeah, close combat. The user fights the foe up close without guarding itself. It also cuts the user's defense and special defense. But it's 120 power, and it is a physical move. These are obviously both physical. False swipe is physical. I can always get another... I can always find another way to catch stuff. I don't really need false swipe anymore. It's not that big a deal. I could just take a... Like, I've got a Scyther with me that's, like, about high 20s that I got from a bug catching contest. If I really needed to get something with False Swipe to try to chip something I was trying to catch down, I could just bring that with me. I don't really need Zangus to have that. And Close Combat would be a nice addition to have that fighting to be able to take care of some of the type coverage. Because that's, like, one of the, the key elements of normal types, right, is they get a lot of diversity in move types. More so than almost every other type, if not every other type. Alright, message again, so I'll be right back as uh, Biker Teddy sends out whatever he's gonna send out.
Oh, hey! How fitting. Sends out Zangoose's rival. Enough, do enough damage so Zangus once again wins the battle. It's always weird with the rival, like the rivalry between Zangus and Survivor when you ask like what team people are on, because most people are like, oh, I, th I like Survivor. And don't get me wrong, I like how Survivor looks too, same as I do with Zangus. But I think inherently Zangus is the better Pokemon, right? Like it's got the better stats, it's got the better coverage, it's got the better moves, like it, it's just outright better than Survivor is, unfortunately. You're in my way. Uh, not really. You're kind of just, like, off in the corner not doing anything. With your Skorupi. Oh, gosh. I remember these from the gen they were introduced and how much of a hassle they were to knock out. Particularly their evolution. I just could not get rid of those suckers. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be keeping X's or Zangus. Like, it's not a bad move. It's, you know, 80 power physical. It would work on Psychics pretty well. Like, the other type it would work on is Dark, but if you've got close combat for that now, you don't really need that anymore. So that part's kind of covered. I'll admit Bug is one of those types that I very, very rarely use, both for the type of move and the type of Pokemon. It just isn't one that I use too much. Especially considering at the very least right here, Slash is going to have crit chance, higher, and same type attack bonus. Which means that it's going to be stronger than that X Scissor. I don't know. It's, it's definitely a type that I need to get better with. It's part of the reason, not the whole reason, but it was part of the reason I also chose Umbreon for my main team, was Dark as a type that I was like, I need to learn Dark a little bit better than I do. I can't just keep using Fire, Flying, Electricity, Water, Grass, and Psychic. With occasionally Dragon, like I need to learn some of these other types. I need to learn Rock, I need to learn Bug, I need to learn... Maybe not ground quite as much. I've used ground a couple times. But I need to learn rock, bug, dark, and... Uh, I guess technically by extension fairy, but that's not an option in this game, so... Tentacruel. Alright, let's see it. Yeah, these are lower level, but they're still given pretty good experience. Granted, there's a lot of them, but I mean, like, Zangus has gone up from, what, 51 to 54 on just this route alone, I think? feel pretty confident that by the time that we get to the end of this route and through the uh, the next gym that I'll be able to start working on leveling up the next asterisk team member, as it were. I'll probably remove ho -Oh from that list now. Well, I might keep it on there, just because it did... It was the thing I was using Fly for a bit, and I did use it for tanking up a couple hits, so it's probably earned its honorary slot to just outright stay there. I will be confident enough to start working on the next one that I have in mind for a want to use them on my team long term but not have them be a final member in the versus project but that's because again they aren't a, uh, a gen 2 Pokemon I'm nearly a 55 
Since we did have to go back up, I am going to go ahead and very quickly go back and heal. I'm aware at this point probably flying would take less time animation-wise, but we're, it's fine. We're already on the bike. And it's ultimately not going to be that big of a difference unless I go the wrong way. Which is looking like what I'm doing. I don't know. I feel like this part of the town is higher up than it actually is for some reason. Here we go. While I was at work, I was re-watching uh, Chugga Conroy's Let's Play of Pokemon Coliseum, and there was one part in there. I just kind of had it on in the background, where people had apparently told him in, like, one of the, uh, the bases. I don't remember which one it was. I guess it's, like, the... It's not the under. It's the other one. The, like, cipher base that's got a bunch of white. It's kind of maze-like, and the dude sets off the alarm towards the end. I can't remember the name of it. But people are telling him, like, oh, it's faster to uh, dump your Pokemon off in the PC and just, like, automatically heal them that way rather than it is to go back to Mount Battle and heal. And it was, like, apparently several people made a big deal about it. And, like, the time difference was, like, if you were to heal every single Pokemon and do it without making any mistakes and using the PC of rotating them around, it was, like, a four-second difference or, like, a six-second difference. <laughs> It was just like, so ultimately it doesn't really matter, and also most times whenever people go to heal when they're doing Let's Plays, they just cut it out so you wouldn't see the time discrepancy anyway. So unless you're keeping it in or specifically you are uh, trying to do a speedrun, probably not going to be that big a deal. Also, I'm glad that that guy's first instinct was just to immediately use Explosion. Would've been funny if that was the only Pokemon he had, just self-destructed on turn one and that just ended. That was it. Just ends right there. Used double hits. I had to learn that earlier on an Apom to evolve it into Ambipom in order to get it a nasty looking bowl cut talked about this before. I think Ambipom is one of the worst looking Pokemon just in terms of how ugly it is. Oh, and a Charmeleon for some reason. Not complaining, but I was, you know, still expecting more poison types, but Charmeleon works too. Crash and burn indeed. Now we can get off the bike. Yep. I believe these are a couple of flying type trainers slash bird Pokemon trainers. Also be right back once again. Sorry about having to keep like pausing here in order to reply to these posts, but again, if I don't do it, they're just gonna like fumble around for even longer than they already are.
we are back. Oh, Noctowl. Very nice. It's like the old stadium announcer. Oh, it's Noctowl. We just love how every single time he's all, just always like, oh, it's this. It's just like he completely forgot that this Pokemon existed, but it's every Pokemon. Just forgot all of them existed. Big fan of Pokemon. Can't list a single one. Not until he actually sees them on the field and then he's like, oh yeah, that's obviously Pikachu. Completely forgot about that one. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Eevee. Yeah, exactly. And speaking of O, oh, it's Mother. Oops, that's the wrong button. I'm gonna go back to Bag. This is like one of my favorite gens of Pokemon. Like, both 2 and the remake of 2. Zangoose regained health, and... Back up to full. If you're looking for Pokemon, you have to look into the tall grass. Lady, we're on badge 11 now? I, th I think we figured that out. Oh, sorry, that's a Sir. That, that is a Boris. I mean, I guess there's there could be some, some female out there named Boris, but I doubt it. That's a very old-fashioned name, and uh, I wonder if there's not too many Borises out there, period, these days. I just think of Boris from Fire Emblem. Good old Dodrio. I don't think I've gotten Dodrio in this file yet. The little Pokeball that's next to Pokemon doesn't show up on trainer battles like this. So, no way to check it right here. I do think I have a Doduo, but I don't think I've evolved it yet. I haven't gotten that far in the decks, so that's fine though. Adios, Boris. Oh, get hey, look who uh, look who spent my money again. Go, mom. She's uh, doing her part out there. And here we are in fuchsia. Let's cut that down. Gotta go with those apricorns that are, uh, not really needed. <laughs> It'll be useful to get to an Everstone. Yeah, exactly. It's like the weird dichotomy of, like, yes, I do want her to save my money. I don't think I'm gonna lose to any trainers unless I just make really stupid decisions or don't heal before a surprise battle or something. But I would like her to save my money without spending my money. Because we looked it up in the verses to see, like, oh, what items can she get you besides berries? Because, like, it seems like 95% of the time that's what it is. And, like, she can get other stuff, but it's not... It's not stuff that you'll not be able to buy at any point. You know, it would it's not stuff like Max Revive or even something that's limited like Evolution Stones or anything like that. She gave us a Moonstone, and I don't think she's done that since, and I think that's just like a scripted one that they always give you. Now I'm just trading a bunch of these shards. Off screen, whenever I was getting trying to get I was trying to check on a Pokemon that I haven't shown that I'm gonna be using on my my battle team yet. Uh, I was looking for a heart scale and found a bunch of shards for sure, but man, it took forever to find a heart scale. I think I found every other item possible in that route, up to and including the rarer ones, like three or four times before I finally found that heart scale. It was ridiculous how long it took. I think it was to the point of after I got that, I like looked up where other ones were that were just in fixed locations. 
and picked up one more just in case. Alright, so there's the gym, there is the healing center, what's over here? Just a house full of apoms. I don't know why anybody would choose to torture themselves that way, but you know, they uh, they did. So that's that's a decision they made. I don't think there's anything else really around here. Nope, doesn't look like it. All the important buildings all just tucked away in this corner here. What's in this one? I actually don't think I checked this one in the uh, verses. Or if I did, uh, they did not have anything worthwhile. Okay. Let's heal and get to the actually interesting bits here. Thank you for waiting. Well, you're welcome. I didn't really have a choice in the matter. Yeah, that's just more of a hint towards what to expect in the gym. But why get a hint towards what the gym will be like when you can just go in and see what it looks like yourself? Yeah, it's, it's a bunch of this. It's the invisible maze that was in the first game as well. I don't remember if the trainers did this little fake-out thing of... You know, all the gym trainers pretend to be the gym leader and they're not. I don't think that was a thing in the first one, but I could be wrong about that. I honestly don't remember. Bear in mind, when we did Fire Red and Leaf Green Versus, that was four years ago. So it's it's been a, been a minute since then. Ah, I got the types wrong in my head. Oh well. I'll risk the lower defense and special defense if that's the best that they can do. Yeah, you probably should have started with that earth power, honestly. <laughs> Nineteen ninety-five experience. Nice. They got it. Uh, Zengus got as much experience as the year I was born. Yes, I am that old, I'm aware. But it's fine. I'll stop putting as much focus into Zangoose once it's, like, pretty much caught up with our team here. And it's pretty close, so I don't think you'll have to be watching me quote-unquote waste hyper potions for too much longer. Right, give me one moment again while I message team. I think they figured out a day at least, now they're trying to figure out a time. Ugh, some people, I tell ya.
unpause that at a bad time, simply because my neighbors decided to throw a what sounded like a cable against the wall. That definitely wasn't plugging something in, that was something hitting the wall. Uh, let's see. Now yeah, we'll just use them slash twice. If they had a higher amount of Pokemon on their team, I would use Swords Dance to keep that attack stat buffed up, but I don't think that's going to matter here. Two thousand and four. The era of a lot of good cartoons being on the air. That was like Danny Phantom, Avatar, The Last Airbender, Teen Titans, that was like the good shit right there. Good memories of 04. At least in terms of cartoons. In terms of let's see, 04. Uh I would have been nine, so in fourth grade. Yeah, not so much for school. I don't think I'm moved to the school that I stayed at until I switched to homeschool until grade 5. Could be wrong about that. I know the one that's, like, on the bottom left of the screen right now is also not the, uh, the gym leader. So I'm gonna try to get to them first. She had three, correct? Alright. This one I actually will Swords Dance for this. And that should, provided we don't get just like a complete defensive wall here, that should be enough to knock out anything else she sends out in one hit. No, that's the more offensive of the two. She, she, I was going to say she might send out Blossom, but she won't because it's not a poison type if you evolve it with the Sunstone. So I don't think we'll be seeing that. Might just be another Gloom, honestly. Nope, it's an Arbok. Which I don't have one of these yet. I do have a, uh... I do have an Ekans, just not an Arbok. Haven't gotten that far in the decks once again to evolve it yet. Since I'm just going in order. I had you fooled. You didn't. I'm trying to fight all the gym trainers for the experience. Last time, unfortunately, I, uh... Yeah. I didn't get this one, so obviously I couldn't fight this trainer after I beat the gym leader. So now, I wonder if we're gonna see a Bulbasaur line of three here. I guess we'll find out. Yep, that's what it's looking like. Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur. I don't think Ivysaur will survive this, but Venusaur might. Guess not. Never mind. Wasn't my disguise perfect? Um, sure. Whatever helps you sleep at night. Let's go out of here and do a, a proper heal real quick. I'm sure part of it is just the fact you had to tackle Jonto's Elite 4, but I feel like most of the fights, thus far at least, I could be wrong, because bear in mind on my other file I think I'm at 13 badges, so I'm still missing a couple. I know I don't have Cinnabar Islands, I know I don't have Pewter Cities, and I don't have um, Viridian Cities. Yeah, I don't have Viridian Cities either. I think those are the three that I'm missing on my other file, but the gyms just do not seem as difficult. And again, it's probably because you're much more level prepared for them here than the Jonto ones.
Though I'd probably never take the time to do it, it would be interesting to see, like... Uh, that would be an interesting top ten list to do of, like, what gyms are the hardest ones to do. Of course, the problem that you run into there is, like, some of the early gyms, like, are they hard just because you picked a starter that doesn't work well? Like, you could argue Brock is pretty tough if you are playing original red and blue and you picked Charmander because you don't have access to Metal Claw. So, of course, it's going to be harder to do that gym with a Charmander than it would be a Squirtle or a Bulbasaur. It's like, how much of that is just, oh, you just don't have the right typing and how much of it is, oh no, this gym is actually difficult. And do you consider difficulty part of that being the puzzle, or do you consider it just the difficulty of the trainers? And do you consider it just the the gym leader, or do you consider it the gym trainers as well? Like, there's a bunch of stuff that could go into that for sure. Which I can't think of any gym in particular where the gym trainers are, like, especially hard. Yeah, that would be a hard one to do, for sure. I feel like it'd be really easy to fall into the trap of, like, it's just a type that you're not practiced in dealing with. So, like, if you're not good at dealing with ice and it comes up, you're like, oh, this gym's gonna be tough. And it might not actually be, it just might be a case of you're just not practiced in fighting ice types. This is the power of swords dance right here, I'm telling you. You've got a great battle technique. Yep, it's called using swords dance once and then just completely crippling your team here. So all he did was he screeched to lower my defense, but since he never got a chance to attack, it didn't really matter that he lowered my defense. Send some to mom, yeah, and I'm sure she'll be calling me after I leave this building. The Soul Badge. Shouldn't it be the Heart Badge since I'm playing Heart Gold? No? Oh well. It's Poison Jab. I feel like Zangus could learn that. Don't know for sure. I don't know if I'd put it on it, but... Just a thought. Tragically, there is no, uh... Shortcut they give you to get out of here. But that's okay. It's, it's not too bad of a maze, to be perfectly honest. Alright, let's see, it is mom calling? No, she actually didn't. Wow. I'm surprised. It's probably because I uh, I do have the amulet coin equ uh, equipped. I believe it's on Umbreon right now, but since I wasn't using Umbreon in any of those fights, I wasn't getting the, the money doubled. But again, I don't need the money right now, so it's not that big a deal. Because even what I spent on what I have thus far all got, like, all of that money I got either from like, breaking open the rocks and finding the little, uh, shards. Or not the shards, but the, like, star pieces and stuff. Or I got from either battling the trainers that rematched me, or some of them were giving me items like nuggets, so I did fine on that front. Alright. Yeah, I'll wait till we get to 59 before I, I start switching around more. At the very least, taking the experience share off of Zangoose. Actually, I think I will take it off of Zangus. What I'm going to do is, since I just mentioned the amulet coin, I might as well put it on. I do think I have a silk scarf if I needed it. Yeah, I could do that as well to boost up Slash's power, but I feel like it's doing fine, honestly. And then I put the wrong item on because I wasn't paying attention, and I've been putting that item on a lot of Pokemon as of late to get them evolved. There we go. And I guess just for the sake of giving Umbreon an item here, we'll put on the black glasses to boost up Assurance and Faint Attack a little bit. Alright, I'm going to take a quick break, A, to continue to answer 
uh, to figure out a time for this and also to put some food on. I don't think we're going to do another gym, but uh, very quickly, showing it on the Poke Gear, in order to get to uh, Lavender Town, because I don't think you can exit through here, I believe. Yeah, either Diglett's Cave is blocked or there's a Snorlax blocking and you can't get past it. So I think you have to go like all the way around and there's a lot of trainers on these four routes here. So we'll take a quick break. Uh, I do need to be done in an hour. So we'll, we're just going to knock out as much of it as we can. And we'll get as far as we get. So I will be back in a few minutes after I figure out uh, something to quickly throw in the oven and answer uh, a couple more of those messages that were sent my way. So we will be right back. I'm actually going to throw to proper intermission this time. So if you don't see the intermission screen whenever I, whenever you look back, that means I'm back. So see you in a few minutes.
we have returned. I think they've figured things out. I might be getting a few more messages, but hopefully they'll be a little bit less frequent. We'll see. But yes, I've, I've taken care of food, so that timer will go off, so we'll take a break long enough for me to uh, get out of the oven, cut it up, and whatnot, whenever that time goes off in about 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. But everything else is taken care of. Also, fittingly, I, I checked my phone and had gotten a text from somebody saying that like a lot of stuff that I regularly get is on sale at uh, one of our local grocery stores. I mean, it's not a local place, but it is local in the sense of it is close by, so I'll definitely have to uh, go check that out. Hopefully, probably tomorrow would be my, my best guess for it, since it's a stuff that I regularly use. It'd be nice to try and get it while it's on sale. So for, again, for those that are just coming back to uh, unpausing this after you've gotten past the little intermission break, this is technically four routes, and they're all connecting together, but this is going to be a lot of trainer battles between this and the next town. Uh, I need to try and make sure that I'm done by... Six. It's currently 5.03. I don't know if we'll get through all of them, because there, there are a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. So, cannot say for absolute certain we will make it through, but I, I will do my best to get as much of it as I can done. Hey, I have to phone my mom. Okay, well, while you phone your mom, I'm gonna... Answer uh, a question that got directed specifically to me, Mr. School Kid Kip. A Voltorb, huh? Wow, very low-level Voltorb at that. I say, despite the speed on that, I think Zangus is gonna be faster just due to the fact that it's almost 60 and that's not even at 40. This might be just a, a trainer full of Voltorbs trying to use static to paralyze me here. This will be a, a good time for Zangus to now be at the same level as everybody else, because I would wager... Even if I don't need to go back to heal, I will probably have to go back to get my power points back by the time I get even halfway through this. And it looks like I was wrong. I guess it's not a full team of Electro. We've got a Magneton. This kid's just ready to be a scientist. He's ready to go work for Team Rocket right here. But I mean, I can't hate on him for using a Magnemite. I've used one before. It was surprisingly very good. It was uh, Sun and Moon, I want to say. I could be wrong about that. But it, it was one where Magnezone was absolutely an option at that point. Speaking of, that guy was calling his mom, and now my mom called me. 
Click. All right. Let's try to get a few more of these battles done before my timer goes off for food. Maybe this is like complete first world problems. Also, I just realized something weird. Hold on. That's odd. Uh, one moment. Yeah, I don't know why that happened. That's weird. I don't know why chat just, like, erased itself on the other end and didn't do that, but... Alright. That's bizarre. I did not erase that, nor did any of the mods erase the chat. So I, I don't know why I did that. I was like, maybe I accidentally like clicked the unshow window, but I didn't do that either. So I'm not sure why it did that. That's really weird. Anyway, maybe it's like my complete imagination, but at least to whenever you're cooking something that's only going to take like 30 minutes tops, it seems like ultimately preheating the oven actually makes the overall product worse. Because like since you ha you're ultimately, instead of cooking it at like we'll say 400, and you put it in when it's at 400 and cook it for 30 minutes. Versus, like, you put it in right when you turn the oven on, and you might have to cook it for a little bit longer, but it also cooks through a little bit more because you had to cook it for longer, and at least for part of that, it was on a lower heat. I wouldn't call it slow cooking or anything, but it feels like it cooks through more effectively, so it almost seems like, in that regard, that preheating is actually causing more of a problem. At least for, like, frozen food you reheat. Not for, like, making a cake or anything like that. That I would say you preheat, but... I don't know. Maybe it's my imagination? Because, like, the only real advantage you get is that it cooks faster, but it does not cook as well. I'd rather it be cooked through as it should, rather than, like, cooked fast, but it's crispy and hard on the outside, and then it's, like, all soft on the inside when it's not supposed to be. I don't know. Food for thought, I suppose. We defeated Boone. Let's hope this match was a boon to his future success. A school trip to Lavender Radio Town for social studies. Well, hopefully not right now, because you're not anywhere near Lavender Town, my friend. You, like, you still got several routes to go. School kid Johnny. Was, well, I was going to say his teacher, Miss Frizzle, there's no kid in Magic School that's called Johnny. Not to my knowledge, unless it, there was a character in the reboot they added. That reboot, though. Yikes. Every now and again, I'll go back to watch... Uh, Normal Boots do their madness bracket on, like... They usually do it for video games, but they did one for 90s cartoons, and Magic School Bus was in there. It didn't win or anything. I think it won the first matchup it was in, and then lost after that. Because admittedly, while it's still, like, a feel-good show, it, it does have some core problems, and the core problem is, like... The problem isn't that it, it wants to teach kids to learn. That's not the problem. It's just the issue of time is a lot of that science is outdated now because it's 30 years old science. And we now know more than we uh, knew then. And so as a result, a lot of the things that were fact at the time are not fact now. You can't really hold that against the show itself. It tried to give accurate information for the time and, you know, time's changed, but... I think they were correct in saying, like, it's not the be-all, end-all of education shows. It's just a good jumping-off point to, like, get kids invested in, particularly, like, sciences. Especially growing up in an area slash time period where science wasn't really... I'm not going to say it wasn't important, but, like, it wasn't taught as well as, say, math or history or English was. At least not for me personally, anyway. Science was, like, the one subject that I never had to, like, study or try for, and I would always do okay in. And I don't feel like it was just naturally understanding science, either. I think it was just a case of, like, 
most of what we were taught was pretty obvious stuff. None of it was things you had to actually think critically about in any grade level. Whereas the other three core subjects you actually did have to try. Could be wrong about that, though. It's also entirely possible that for the time, which this one I'm not completely sure about. I don't think so. But I think it was, as is unfortunately the case with a lot of schools, it was learning about, um, it was learning how to test take. It wasn't learning the subject. Which I am definitely a product of for science classes. And, you know, they, they say that the worst thing you can do is just like, cram in all the information that you need 15, 10, 5 minutes before your test, regurgitate it and forget it. I can confirm that's true because I absolutely did that myself for a lot of classes at high school level. Didn't do it in university as much, and that's, I think that's one of the reasons, combined with teachers that have been in their field for a lot longer than, uh, than high school teachers do necessarily. But I think that was the reason I learned more, even for core classes for university, with the exception of one, but that was a teacher that was definitely not uh, interested in teaching. That was a classic old case of, I'm required to teach, but I want to do sports. And it's like, oh, great. I'll show this off, I don't expect it to do high damage or anything like that, but yeah. Here's Eruption, it does attack both opponents and it does not uh, damage your ally. It did good damage here, even though it wasn't very effective specifically just because he was at full health, but still. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one I attack. We're gonna get him either way. I thought I had Swift on Typhlosion, but I guess not. But either way, it's fine. It's no big deal. K and Tia. Is it supposed to be a joke on Katie, maybe? Sure, why not? Since I'm doing a lot of off-screen stuff, having the uh, having additional people call me to do battles is something I approve of. It's probably ultimately not faster, but at least they give you money. Sometimes they give you items for defeating them. Uh, most of the time they do that, it's typically your stat boosting items, zinc, carbos, HP up, that type of thing. But I mean, they're they're still appreciated for sure. I'm not gonna turn that down. I still find it very weird you can't deposit items into storage in this game. I don't know why that was a thing. Like, even for the original, for Gold, Silver, Crystal, if you have to sacrifice because of the limitations, if you have to sacrifice that for something else, then that makes sense. But in the remake, I feel like probably should have been able to do that. It would have just been nice to be able to clear out my inventory. Because I know in Gen 3, Ruby Sapphire, like, I wouldn't say constantly, but about to the point that I get to Slayport, which for those that haven't played before, that's uh, between the second and third gyms. That is kind of the point where I'm starting to get that, oh no, the item bag is full warning, and I'm starting to have to put in, um, starting to have to put items in storage. And thankfully I don't have to worry about that here, but I do like at the very least having just a small amount of items so I'm not rifling through my bag for like a minute straight when I should have been able to do it in probably about five to ten seconds. I feel like I did miss something here so I'm gonna double check. So I just basically went all the way across. No, I guess I didn't miss anything. All right, let's uh, get back here a little bit faster. All right, on route 14, and my alarm went off, so let me check my food real quick, and then we will be right back.
Yeah, we probably got enough time for like somewhere between two to four battles, depending on how long the battles go, before I need to uh, grab that out. It still needs a little bit more time, just not much. Alright, let's start mixing it up here. We've had Zangus in the front for a while. And I'm not worried about swapping that am amulet coin over. We'll be fine without it. So if I remember to do it, great. If not, no big deal. That's what we're we looking at here. Third. Yeah, these are low enough levels to where I probably don't need like the, the charcoal or the black glasses. None of the like stat boosting items will be able to take these things out. Provided that we're not doing half damage with not very effective moves, this should not be too bad. You can see what I mean, though, like, if you're at this level. I mean, honestly, if you could, like I said, if you can beat the Elite Four in Jono because you're, they're pushing, like, what, level 50 at that point? If you could beat the champion, like, these guys should be no problem by this point because you've beaten the champion and several gyms since then. So you're almost assuredly very higher level than these guys are. Swap that out for Silk Scarf. I'm gonna just keep Typhlosion in the front unless I start seeing like a bunch of water types. Even then it probably won't matter if they're this level. But once he gets to 61, we'll swap him out for Umbreon or Crobat. And just Lince, uh, lince. Rather, uh, rather, we shall lather, rinse, and repeat. There's a tongue twister for you. Rather, we shall lather, rinse, repeat. Yeah, I don't think I could go any faster than that. Oh, that's unfortunate for you, my friend. The Bulbasaur line, once again. Preparing to get torched alive. And for anybody wondering, the uh, quote-unquote secret, which again, spoilers are allowed, so it's totally fine. Oh, he's just got the, the Kanto starters. Never mind, then. But yes, I'm aware you can pick one of these up once you get to Pallet Town. I'm fully aware of that. That really won't affect single player. For multiplayer, for our verses, uh, it won't affect me all that much, because, again, I'm only allowed to use for my final Team Gen 2, so... The fact that, again, little bitty secret, that um, you can get any of the Kanto starters and also can get any of the Hoenn starters doesn't really matter for my final team, but it might for Icarus's. The one key aspect here, I don't think this thing has flash fire, so we're just going to do this. Yeah, we're fine. The one key element that that will matter for Icarus is that A, she is not allowed to use repeats, period, so she could not use Squirtle again for her final line. She could choose it to, like, have it like I have with Zangus here, just not for a final team. And she, so she could use Bulbasaur, she could use Charmander. She could also take any of the Hoenn starters, but if she does, then that means that she would not be allowed to use any of those Hoenn starters that she picks for Gen 3. So if she took, like, Mudkip, for example, and said, I want this on my final team, that means when we do Gen 3, she is locked out of using Mudkip. She's not allowed to use it. Which would be doubly interesting if she chose to pick, like, two starters. I, I guess the only real caveat is she can't pick all three unless she is willing to pick a starter and then essentially give it up the minute that she uh, has something that she wants to use on her final team. But I don't foresee that happening because you get them very late game and they're only at level five. So I doubt she'd want to put in the time for that whenever you could just use it again in the next gen and just use it like normal. Just doesn't make much sense. Alright, I'm gonna check my food again real quick here and we'll, we'll see how far it has gone.
Alright, there we go. Did not forget to unmute or anything, just figured I'd hit the button and let the little animations go ahead and start playing here. Uh, we'll go ahead and use Eruption, since we can double target with that. Uh, I don't really think it matters what I do here, so we'll go after Sand Slash, because I think it's more likely to survive Eruption. I don't think either of them would either way, even at full health, but we'll just say sl Sand Slash has the higher chance. That, that is now out and cooling, and it smells very nice. There's something, like, magical about managing to pull a pizza out of the oven at exactly the right time. Like, where it's not overcooked at all, it is just, edges are golden brown, it is absolutely perfect. You could not have timed it better. And it's, you get double points for it, too, if you actually did not set a timer and did not use a timer. Nope, I am hitting all the wrong buttons. I want to go back to Eruption. Obviously, Golbat, there's no chance Roselia survives that. Even if Golbat's a lower level, there's no chance. It's not going to survive something that's 17 levels higher, type weakness, same type attack bonus. There's just no way. Absolutely no way. That concludes today's battle. Indeed it does. Jeez. I thought that might be him for a second. I'm like, why did he call me now? But nope. We can, we can expect to see a fair few of these. Because again, it's based on how much you're, uh, how much money you're making. So if you got the amulet coin, that means you're gonna make more. So she's gonna call you more frequently. And technically, if I wanted to be like getting as many items as I could from that, which I'm not, but if I wanted to, every time I would would count until I got to five and then go back to heal, but also pick those items up, but I'm not worried about it, so. I will only go back to heal if I genuinely do need to heal. Which, at the rate we're going, is going to be less about healing and more about uh, running out of power points on something I'm trying to drain. I think Chansey is actually in that grass that she's in right now, but I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna keep going forward. You're the photographer, correct? No, you're not. Okay, my mistake. That would be kind of a cool place to meet a Pokemon, is like out there by the little, little wind vanes. Uh, it'll still probably get knocked out by this. Oh, it actually survived. Wow. What's it gonna get to do? Fury Swipes. Alright, let's see it. Three. Oh, only three. Well, it was a good try. And if it's any consolation, I think that's the first Pokemon to survive, like, more than one hit, not counting whenever I was just doing something to do a little bit of chip damage, knowing they wouldn't survive the round in a double battle. I'm trying to tell if my neighbor's kid is screaming or not again. It's hard to tell because it sounds like they're farther away, but it also might just be phantom noise in my head from hearing it so much. I guess their kid must be, like, young toddler age. Like, I'm gonna guess probably four or five. I'm making a guess based on the fact that, like, I was hearing her about one o'clock in the afternoon, and for those watching this in the future, this is during, uh, school. I think at absolute latest for people, school started this Monday, and it's currently Wednesday. So, I think it's a kid old enough to, like, walk around and, like, make little stomping noises, but not old enough to be in kindergarten and first grade. So, that's my guess, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm just going off of an educated guess and nothing more. Alright, we're off to the next route. I should go to Rock Tunnel to get myself an Onyx. Nah, just go to Victor. Well, I guess for you, you probably don't want to go to Jonto, so maybe that is your best bet. I was going to say go to Jonto and go to the Victor Road and get a stronger one there, but yeah, maybe not.
You can go to that one route that's by the um, the safari zone where you can have a small chance of finding a Steelix, which is quite nice, because if you can't trade or don't like trading or anything like that, then you don't have to trade to get a Steelix, you can just get it there. And sure, it quote-unquote won't be the optimal one or whatever, you know, it won't be one that you bred from level one and trade it over and all that, but if you want the Steelix specifically, just for getting through story mode, you can pick one up there. I get why they do, but part of me is kind of like, man, I wish they'd release at least, like, one Pokemon game main series where you don't have to trade at all. Because there, there definitely are Pokemon games where you don't have to trade to uh, collect everything. Like, looking at Colosseum and XD mostly, there's just a set amount and you just pick them all up and then you have them all. Wow, I'm, I'm very proud of you with that whisper. I, you know what, that's not even worth using a flamethrower on. Even if, even if it survives, I don't want to waste the power points. And nope, it did not survive. Somehow I cannot say I'm surprised by that. Right, let's see if you're a little bit more effective than your other uh, picnicker. Which, the bar is pretty... You know, pretty dang low. Yeah, that's definitely better than a, a Wismer, for sure. Yeah, I think she's getting mad and throwing stuff around now. I can hear her banging on the walls. You might be able to hear it, too. Should watch the uh, microphone and see if I can hear it. Oh, of course, now she stopped. But that wasn't like a, oh, we're getting something out of a drawer, kind of like bumping up against the wall. That that sounded like somebody actively banging their fist against the wall. Since I'm not too particularly loud while recording, especially not by comparison to how loud they are, I doubt they would be trying to get on my case for making noise. Like, if, if this right here, this voice that I'm speaking at, if this volume is the loudest I get as your neighbor, like, that's pretty quiet compared to some of the noises that I always constantly hear, which thankfully is nothing, you know, not them getting freaky or anything, thankfully. But I guess that would also be one upside to the fact that I work overnight, since most of the time if they were to do that, I wouldn't even be here. There's level 61, which is good, because it's about time that I trade at Typhlosion out because I am running out of power points pretty quickly here. Uh, yeah, we'll start with Umbreon, I guess. Doesn't really matter either way. I know it's a part Psychic, but again, this is level 29, so... I don't think it was going to make too much of a difference. And then a Magikarp for some reason <laughs> that's level 65. Alrighty then. The sad thing is you know despite that high level it's gonna get the absolute garbage for it. it like, what are we thinking, like mid 200s? Maybe high 200s? Yeah, mid high 200s. Definitely not anything to write home about. Wasn't there another trainer back here? No, I guess there wasn't. I'm not going back to read whatever that trainer tips was. Uh, I'm getting poked again, though, so give me a second.
And you think you would have adults that can just, like, settle on a time frame. <laughs> it's like it's a 30 minute difference, and it's been a while since we've had a meeting. Just, if it runs long, or if it runs short, then we just, like, hang out for a bit. If it runs long, then we just don't worry about it. Like, go over what's important, and if it anything else comes up, just send a message in Teams. That's what it's there for. Like, I do agree we need to have the meetings monthly, which we probably ultimately don't, but, like, just actually meeting up and chatting with each other and seeing how everybody's doing is important. But also, like, if something serious comes up and there's a meeting two weeks down the line, but, like, people have to know now, hey, congratulations, we live in a world where you could send a message on Teams or send us a text or call us or email us or, like, anything saying, hey, this is what's going on, just thought you should know, and then it's taken care of. Yeah, you, you double team away, that's why I've got faint attack on my moveset. Specifically to stop double team spammers. No one likes a double team spammer, my man. Not a one. Pikachu's not exactly a uh, superhero in the defense department, so even if Umbreon doesn't have a very high attack stat, it's honestly fine. Never understood why they put in trainers like this that's just like all the same Pokemon. Same type? Like, sure, even outside of gyms. Sure, fine. Like, if you want a bug trainer that uses, like, Caterpie, Kakuna, Butterfree, Weedle, Metapod, Beedrill, like, that set of six, which I know I didn't do those in order, but, like, fine. But don't just go Caterpie, 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 just, like, really? At least the evolution line, or, like, starting with the evolution line gives you a, a bit more to look forward to. Also, I'm going to heal it off of Umbreon, but, like, massive props to Umbreon from just completely tanking through that paralysis and just not caring at all. Uh, who do I have in slot two? Because it's not Crobat. There we go. Let's see what the couple's got. Don't you think my girlfriend's stronger than I am? Uh, well, I don't know. I haven't fought you in a Pokemon battle, for one. Good old Tim and Sue. Well, this looks to be a pretty open and shut case here, I'm afraid. Wish I was paying attention to who sent out who, and I, I guess Pokemon-wise I could tell them level-wise who's stronger. Even though the Psyduck probably is ultimately stronger just because Cadabra's defense is paper thin. Psyduck's probably a more rounded, stat-wise character than Cadabra is. But I don't know, I've never used Golduck on my team for actual battle. I've got one on my team now for Surf, Whirlpool, and Waterfall, but not for actually battling. Yep, good old bird Pokemon, the type that they changed and switched it over to flying. Sent out Farfetch'd, alright, well. That is a uh, decision one could make to add to their team. Because remember, at this point, Surfetch did not exist, so... Even if you're like, oh, but they got an evolution later, they're really good. Well, right now they're not, so... They're not good right now. Coolfish is not good. Farfetch is not good. Like, these are Pokemon that have not gotten their evolutions at the time, and therefore choosing to keep one on your team at the time would have been foolish. We've rounded the bend, at least. Get a 
very fortunate that seeing a lot of psychic types here to just very quickly knock out. I know Assurance isn't as strong as Bite, at least in terms of its base damage. But for when we're not fighting trainers that are much lower level and therefore might actually be able to outspeed Umbreon, it would hit them with double damage, I think is what it said on the, the thing. Of, like, it does twice as much damage if they've taken damage that turn. And since Umbreon's not super fast, that would be a, a good thing to have. But we could probably just use Assurance to one-shot these anyway, because it's not... It's only a gap power of 10 if it's not getting doubled from 60 to 50, so... Should be fine either way. Let's see if we can get a stronger opponent with Firo here. Nope, not quite. I do like Talo. I absolutely do. I've used one before many times in Gen 3. It's just at least the Firo we've got here is evolved. The Talo, not so much. anything right here? Nope, I guess not. Okay. Oops, nope, nope, don't back out of that. I was gonna go ahead and... Since I just saw the uh, whole sent some to mom thing. There it is. Again, ultimately, probably won't make a difference. Really doesn't matter that much. But hey, maybe it'll save me a little bit of having to spam. Well, not having to spam, but having to... I guess technically spam. Spam going through the Elite Four to get money or, you know, waiting for a rematch, whatever the case might be. Route 12. So for the record, this is where we are on the map in terms of going through all those trainers. So, like... You've still got here, technically going through here, I think there might be a trainer there, so, like, it's it's a big route, because bear in mind, we've pretty much exhausted two of our Pokemon in terms of, uh, specifically just running out of power points. I am not about to waste any faint attack or assurance on that. Nice try, though. Get the feeling we're going to be seeing more of the same here. In fact, I think I remember this guy because I was like, he could have had at least one Gyarados, and then there was somebody later down the ramp that had three Gyarados. That's, oh my gosh, can they just, like, pick a time? One moment while Magikarp dies here.
Hopefully that will calm them down at least a little bit. Of course, go figure, it's the scheduler that's having the most pushback, even though she wanted us to figure out a time. She's honestly just gotta stop working, so she's just spread way too thin. Way too thin. Like, she's the only one that's got a different, uh, time that she gets into work, which is 11 for her, it's 9.30 for everybody else, because she can't get to her job until 11. But more often than not, she has to leave early because she can't finish her shifts. So she gets there late because of a job, and then has to leave early because of a job, and like, it's just her and her husband. She doesn't have like a bunch of kids, she doesn't have anybody in her family that's ailing. Like, I've asked her straight up, I was like, Do, what, um, are you taking care of anybody, or like, big family, is that why you need all the jobs? And she's like, no, that's not why. Like, no, I'm just, I work a lot of jobs. Which tells me either A, you're financing a lifestyle that is much too lavish if you need four jobs and your husband's got at least one more, and you need to chill out and just not live in a mansion with like eight cars or whatever, or B, you need to get in contact with somebody that will teach you how to manage your money a little bit better because you're spending through it too quickly. Don't know what the issue is there, but like if you're working four jobs, clearly there is an issue there. So of course, yeah, she's the one that's having the pushback on not wanting to start at a certain time. It's like, well, you're the one that required the meeting be mandatory, so uh, watch her be the only one that doesn't show up, which would be hilarious. It wouldn't be the first time that we've had a scheduler do that at this job either. If they're like, hey, this meeting is mandatory, you have to come. If you don't come, like, I'm going to report you to higher-ups. You could potentially get fired, and then everyone showed up except for the person that started the meeting. Because, of course. That said, I would never want to have to do that job. Mostly because there's no pay increase, and also... I don't want to be committed to my job that much. Like, I was already committed to it way too much whenever I was having to work weeks on end with no break, where I'd have to work like two to three weeks in a row with no days off to get a day off. Like, I'm not, not about that, thanks. Like, I've got family that I need to take care of. I've got friends that I want to spend time with. I don't want to be committed to a job that much. I don't. Like, even if my family was in good health, I, I still wouldn't want to do it. I still wouldn't want to do it. Everybody gets to make their, their own decision on what's important to them in life, and for me, my friends and family are more important than my job. For some people, that's not the case. Ah, the roost. I'm just gonna watch that health bar go up and down and up and down, huh? Yep. Oh, I love it when trainers do this. It shows just how strong and powerful they are. By, you know, delaying the inevitable, rather than actually trying to come up with a counter strategy. Hopefully shouldn't be as bad. Though I do think we might have to switch over to Crobat after this next fight, just solely because I think we're gonna run out of power points and everything else. Other than quick attack, but... I mean, I guess I could try to use quick attack, but I don't know. Oh, thank goodness, are you who I think you are? Oh, thank heavens. If I have to catch any more water types with a good rod, this is going to help a lot. I was looking at the percentages and, like, trying to catch what I was trying to get with the, um, the super rod that he just gave me was, like, 30%, which is, you know, that's not bad. It was 3% with the good rod. So it, it was doable, absolutely, that's why I've got them, but it will be way faster now. Let's 
go ahead and finish off the last of these moves here. Oh yeah, especially if you're gonna... Well, no, I've gotta switch out. I thought he only had the one, but nope, he's got more than that. Where's the other person that's not online right now? There's one other person that does, like, our, our meeting minutes. I'm surprised she's not on at this point in time. I guess technically her, her day shift is over. It's been over for almost an hour now. I do wish she was the one coordinating things. She just, she's the one management person in that building that has prevented the building from just completely collapsing. Metaphorically, and probably a little bit, actually. Like, if she found a better job and moved on, that they would just crumble without her. Every time that I've had to jump between, like, one management person and another, and it's taken, like, literal weeks to get something done, I'm like, you know what, I'm just gonna go to her, and it gets solved in, like, five minutes. It's just like, why did I not just do this to begin with? The answer is, of course, legally you have to show that you jumped through all the hoops. And once you've proven that you jumped through all the hoops, then you can go and do this thing. That is a not flattering sprite of that quillfish right there. That was one of the ones that I had to catch with the low percentage chances. No, I don't think you listening to the radio is why you lost. Is this the route that has like a couple of extra trainers on it? Yeah, it is. Okay, route 11. Let's swap out here. It's going to be close in terms of everybody running out of PP, and Umbreon's not going to get to 61, unfortunately, uh, without me going back to get that power point back, or the power points back, but... I think we'll be able to get to Lavender Town without having to fly back where we're out of power points. Did I give him the end of the corner? Or did I just back out of that? I did back out of that by accident. Yep, it is. And yes, I would. Oop, no. I already jumped off the bike. I thought I hadn't, so that was why I did that. Oh, what is it now? Alright, green apricorn. Ooh, I do need to answer that one for sure. I think, I'm not completely certain, but I think from what I remember of seeing the uh the guide for getting leaf stones whenever I was looking for one for Icarus before I got one from the uh the bug catching contest in Jonto was if you defeat that specific person, Gina, Picnic or Gina, I think she gives you one. I think it's 
five wins? I thought it was three. But I've gotten three wins against her. I think I'm at exactly three right now, and that would be a fourth. And she didn't give it to me. But it also could be I miscounted, and if it is at five, and I'm at four currently, if I go and beat her again, she might give it to me. Because I would like to have that Leaf Stone, because the Evolution Stones are definitely going to be a little bit more tricky for me to obtain enough of those to get the Pokedex done. I, I feel like I'm going to run low somewhere. I feel like the, the Leaf Stone is definitely going to be one of those. I know you can go to Bill's house and show him, like, various Pokemon that evolve using Evolution Stones, and he will give them to you. Like, he'll give you one for Growlithe or Vulpix. He'll give you one for, I think, Oddish. So, like, you can get some there, but I'm willing to bet, at least in terms of people giving you one or where you can buy them, I think it's a finite quantity. I don't think you can buy them anywhere. Which means that stuff like the Bug Catching Contest is going to be your... Uh, unlimited, but also random of which one it gives you options. Because I've been doing that pretty frequently, and unfortunately what it's been giving me has not been... Like, it's given me a Leaf Stone, a Water Stone, stone a Shiny Stone, and a Dawn Stone, I believe, are the four most recent ones that it's given me. And I'm like, I kind of want a Fire Stone, though. Like, that would be nice. I don't know if they're on a rotation, I don't know if it picks randomly, I don't know what it is, but... That I know I only know what I've gotten thus far. And I mean I'll take any of them. Anything's better than nothing, so. I'll keep on checking. I'll check it again tomorrow. Checked it yesterday, which is Tuesday at the time of uh, when this is being streamed. So I'll check it again tomorrow on Thursday, and I'll probably check it on Saturday as well. Oh no, I can't escape. Whatever will I do? Probably this. Yeah, thankfully this route, for what it's worth, did I already... Okay, I was about to say, I didn't think I fought him. This route's got, like, some trainers on it, but not a lot. This is a pretty short route. I think it's this guy and then the one other one you might have seen just to the left of him. And I think that's all of them. Let's try for a cross poison here for stab bonus potential crit. Didn't even need it. There we go. Part of me does want to try using an Arcanine sometime. Like, I didn't use it on my Fire Red team, but that's because I already picked a Fire Starter, so I was like, eh, I don't really need to double down on a Fire type. I try not to do that too much, at least for the Pokemon type. I'm fine with having, like, Umbreon and Crobat both have dark moves on them. That part's fine, but at least for their actual type of Pokemon, I try not to double down too much if I can avoid it. Which, due to that, it'll probably ultimately cause me some issues in Gen 4 of trying to avoid overlap, but we'll see. I think he was the last... Yep, that's as far as we can go there. I could just put on a repel, I'm fully aware of that. Ah, of course. have the, uh, the dexterity to be able to run through there and not make a single mistake, and by running, of course, it increases the chances you're going to get jumped. There we go. Doing the old Resident Evil tank style controls of one run one direction, stop, and then while you're stopped, turn, and then move forward. This is uh, apparently my best strategy here. Yeah, we'll leave Umbreon in the front. I know it doesn't have a lot of power points for stuff left, but we're nearly there. Yeah, I did have something to do at 6, but I'm not getting messaged by the person that I was waiting on, so... We're good to keep going through to Lavender Town, honestly. Sunflora and Magmar, huh? Alright, well... Not that Sunflora is much of a threat, but we can get rid of that pretty easily. Magmar might survive this. There's no way Sunflora survives this, though. Stab bonus plus weakness. No, that's it. Also being, like, 15 levels lower.
And that did pretty good damage, considering. Vic and Terra. Yeah, we still got a couple trainers left. My mind is telling me, well, my mind is telling me no. My mind is telling me to like, go back and heal, go get your power points back for everything. But then I'm like, these are like mid thirties and even the Pokemon that they are using, if they're using stuff like Remoraid, I'm not too terribly worried about it. But it very much feels like the, you're getting towards the end of Victory Road and not the it's been difficult part of it. It's just been resource draining is all. Here goes Octillery. I, I recently evolved that one. I recently did the Remoraid, catching the Remoraid and evolving into Octillery. That was one of the rare encounters, rarer, like three to 5%. That actually didn't take me that long to get. I think I got it on like cast seven or eight with the good rod. It was didn't take that long, surprisingly. Some of the other ones absolutely did. Finding that Quillfish took a long time. And out goes Zatu. Feeling Noctowl might survive that, it's better defensively. It's one of those ones that I think people often sleep on. I don't think Noctowl is necessarily great per se, but I think it's better defensively than people expect when they first look at it. If you're like, oh, that shouldn't be too hard to take out, and then it actually survives a hit, and you're like, oh, never mind. That's the photographer, correct? Yep, that's the photographer, so I'm going to ignore him. And I am going to take on that last trainer, but I'm going to go ahead and heal real quick, since I'm right here. God knows the team earned it. Let's go grab all these, too, while we're here. Surely we hit five calls and maxed it out. It was at bare minimum four, so I gotta think it was... That was the only reason she stopped calling towards the end was because she couldn't anymore. So this is four... Yep, that's five. Yep, she had maxed out. She maxed out her credit card, or rather her son's credit card. Goldine? I do, unfortunately, remember Goldine. I remember it less from any of these games and more of Smash Bros. of getting into Pokeball and being very disappointed by it. Because it just flops around and does nothing. Which, speaking of flopping around and doing nothing, it appears that's what this trainer is going to do. I guess I could have moved over to Umbreon since Crobat's at 61 now. Not that these are, like, insanely good for experience or anything, but still. Yeah, this definitely does mean off-screen I'm going to try and work on building up my next team member here. With any luck, depending on how busy or not busy I am in the next couple days, I'm going to try to stream more of this again. But of course that means that uh, it will likely not have caught up to the rest of the team in time. But that's 
that's totally fine. <laughs> Almost 100 hours there, getting pretty close. Next time you see that, it will definitely be at 100 hours for sure. But I've got the good run, and uh, we made some we made some pretty good progress here. Let's take a quick look, because we, we started with just these two towns. We quickly moved over to Celadon, we went through this route, we got the Fuchsia City done, and we went through this huge section right here. So Now we've got Lavender, and there's not any gym in Lavender Town, so we'll be going through the Power Plant and Rock Tunnel area, I think. We may not be able to get through Rock Tunnel, or I think we needed Flash, so I did the Power Plant stuff, and then I just went back to Saffron and went north, I think. Or I went to Cerulean and went... Yeah, I went Saffron to Cerulean and then north up to here because this is required to unlock the Cerulean gem. And I believe that's where I am on the Versus file. So if we do another stream, I'll actually be ahead of the... Uh, I'll be ahead of the Versus file because I'll have gone on to, uh, to Pewter and challenged Brock there. But I will worry about that at another date. Go ahead and end things off here. Thank you all for watching me go through a lot of trainers and a lot of routes. Uh, sorry about having to pause constantly, and they're still messaging me now. But I did want to get a stream in because it had been a hot minute, and this was the only day where I was like, I'm very certain I can get a stream in. But I'm, I'm hoping that Thursday or Friday I will get a chance to. It would probably be Thursday, but we'll see. It won't be a versus stream, though, because Icarus is going to be busy, so it'll be more of the single-player file if I do one. Or it might be something different altogether. I might decide to play a different game, but we'll see. In the meantime, though, thank you all for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.